Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the Seiko 5 Atlas 200 meter field watch, model number SKZ209J1. And you know the drill. We'll open it up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions, the build quality, and then I'll give you my personal opinion of this Seiko Atlas. Also, make sure you check out my Amazon page for this and many of my other favorite watches. I'll make sure to put a link in the description field for you. So here you go, typical Seiko watch box. Now this was interesting because when you open up the box, there's only one piece of literature in here, and that's just the basic functions of the watch written in two different languages, and that's it. No Seiko warranty card, no big thick manual, just this one kind of fold out brochure style piece of uh, literature slash pamphlet. <laughs> uh, not quite sure why this is the only thing that's in there, but it is. So anyway, let's go ahead and take this thing off the, uh, the pillow. And we'll get some rough specs and then we'll put up some more of the concrete specs on the left hand side of the screen. So let's get out the digital micrometer or calipers. Some people call them different things. So let's look at the case size. This is going to be a little, little bit difficult because you've got all these different crowns pointing out here. So case size without the crown, crowns, you're looking at about, about 43 millimeters. Let's talk about the thickness. Thickness right on the dot at 14 millimeters. Let's do a lug to lug. Lug to lug, you're looking at, say, go ahead, say 50 millimeters. And let's look at the stainless steel bracelet. It looks like this is one of those that tapers down. It starts up here at about 20 and then tapers down to, let's go ahead, say 18, I guess. So there you go. And on the left hand side of the screen, we'll go ahead and put all the concrete specs for you. Uh, you're looking at uh, 200 meters water resistant, which of course is 660 feet. It does have the older 7S36 movement inside with a 43 hour power reserve. It is non-windable and non-hackable. It does have a hard lex crystal. It has Lumabrite on the indexes and hands. It has a big day and date over there at three o'clock. It also has a nice screw down crown over there at four o'clock. It has a unidirectional outer bezel and a bi-directional inner bezel, and it is made in Japan. Now this is a, a little bit of a throwback review. This watch has been out for quite some time now. I've been meaning to review this thing for literally years. I just love the way this thing looks, but it does have a few issues, especially in light with the new, uh, especially in light of the new 4R36 movement uh, that is windable and hackable. That's probably my biggest gripe right there. This old 7S36 movement, it just ain't cutting it anymore. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about this thing. Let's talk about the dial. Um, really, really nice dial. Obviously very legible. The only thing on the dial that's a little kind of, uh, it's a little distracting. The hands are so chromed out that they really, really catch the light and they glint a lot uh, in direct sunlight. So it can be a little bit um, confusing just because the hands really do catch that sunlight. So if you're in direct sunlight, uh, you might have to kind of angle this thing a little bit to uh, tell the time. So far as the rest of the dial goes, I mean, great big indexes, everything is well loomed. Uh, you have a nice, huge, uh, big day and date window over there at three o'clock. Um, again, indexes are nice. The inner chapter ring, and let me show you that real quick. This is your for your for your direction finding function. Now, the problem with this is this, if you barely touch this, that inner chapter ring is gonna move, as you can see. So even, even in the process of putting on the watch, you barely bump this thing and this thing is gonna move. There's absolutely no friction on this inner bezel. Uh, in contrast to the outer bezel having a lot of friction. Really, really nice outer bezel. Limited amount of back play on it. Uh, I like the outer bezel, plus I love the color. I love this really dark navy blue color on the outer bezel. Plus it lines up perfectly. So really nice inner bezel. I mean, really, I'm sorry, really nice outer bezel. But the inner bezel, man, I wish they could have put some friction on this thing. I don't know why they didn't. It, I mean, it turns so easily. Again, it's bi-directional. It looks like you also have some fake screws right here on this uh, these crown guards over here at nine o'clock. These are not real screws. These little things right there on my finger is. Uh, I wish they could have. I mean, the actual crown itself has a lot of has a lot of grip. It's knurled but you just barely touch it and this thing moves. Anyway, let's talk about the crown over there at four o'clock. This crown, the exact opposite. Tons of grip. Obviously it's a screw down crown. You have really, really pronounced crown guards over here. And this definitely protects that crown very well. I also like the fact that when you screw and unscrew these crowns back in, and I can't really, I can't show you or tell you, you just have to experience it yourself. But when you screw the crown back in on these atlases, it has a definite stop point. I mean, you can feel, I mean, it just stops. 
There's no kind of tightening it up a little bit more. It has a definite stop point, which I really like. Uh, unsigned, it looks like. Yep, unsigned. But tons of grip. Really nice unscrew and screw in action on the crown itself. So definite win on this crown over here at 4 o'clock. Let's talk about the case. Uh, mostly polished surfaces on the case. Uh, you have a couple brush, uh, brush, brush, a couple of brush surfaces uh, with the lugs, but mostly polished. You have a nice amount of grip, kind of a coin edge bezel almost, almost on the. Uh, actually, it's more of a knurled, more of a knurled bezel on the uh, the outer bezel here. But tons of grip on the outer bezel, which I like. Let's go ahead and put this thing back because I just touched, and that's going to drive me nuts if I don't reset it back to sixty. There we go. Lines up perfectly, like I said. Uh, on the other side, again, mostly polished surfaces. And, and it's funny because the crown is signed over here with the Seiko 5 logo, but it's not signed over here with the actual logo. I mean, with the actual crown. So the crown, it really doesn't do anything, gets the logo. The crown, it actually sets the, the date and the time, <laughs> doesn't get a logo. I don't understand that decision. But anyway, I guess that's just what Seiko wanted to do. Um... What else? Let's look at the case back. Case back is it's different because it's a Seiko 5. Uh, you can see where it says made in Japan down there. Uh, and there are about three different versions of this watch, by the way. And they're probably not going to be making them anymore. So if you like this watch, I would definitely consider, I would, I would, you know, advise you to uh, consider getting one pretty quick because they're probably not going to be around too much longer. But uh, anyway, so there you go. Kind of typical Seiko 5 case back. Nothing spectacular there. So anyway, what else? What else I want to tell you? Um, typical Seiko bracelet. I mean, you have polished uh, end links right there. I'm, I'm not sorry, polished links uh, on both sides. And it's kind of a mixture of polished and brushed. Uh, typical Seiko buckle. There you go. Uh, typical Seiko stamped um, kind of scissor clasp there. I wish they'd really make these a little bit different. But anyway, you have to spend a little bit more to get the nicer buckle. But these, I mean, these, these buckles... And these bracelets do what they're supposed to do. They're not super fancy. It's probably a huge cost-saving um, feature for Seiko. They probably save a ton of money making these bracelets. And they're not bad. They're just not as nice as they could be. That's kind of the key. If Seiko could make these bracelets a little bit nicer, people would absolutely love it. And I don't think it would cost them that much more money to make these bracelets just a little bit nicer. You know, make a really nice, uh, you know, milled um, clasp here instead of the stamped metal. People would love that, man. They'd absolutely love it. Um, what else? Oh, now there are, again, there are a couple different versions of this watch and there's also another version that you can't find anymore. And let me put that on the left-hand side of the screen. That's the XSKZ223. Uh, and that's another version. There are like nine different versions of that watch, but you can't buy them anywhere. I shouldn't even be showing it to you because people are going to look at it and go, God, I really want that. But I don't know if this one came first or the other one came first. The other one obviously is not for sale anymore. So I would think that model, the SKZ223 would be the older model. And this is the newer model because this is still available. But if you look at the older model, again, let me put it up on the left-hand side screen. That has a really, really nice crown over there at nine o'clock. And I'm just guessing, I might be wrong, but I'm guessing that crown is actually a screw down crown over there at nine o'clock. This model looks like the successor to this model, and this looks like the original. I just, I don't know. I'm try, I tried to find some information about them. Uh, I just can't find any information about which model came first, this one or the other one. Uh, anyway, both really good looking watches. Um, the, the dials are a little bit busy. You've got a lot going on, a lot of numbers um, on, the, on the outer bezel and on the inner chapter ring. And, you know, it, but it's just a great, great looking watch. I love the way this thing looks, despite the fact, like I said, that the hands are a little bit too shiny for me. They're just really, really blinged out. Um, I love the look of this watch. I also like the applied Seiko logo up there at 12 o'clock, if you can see that. I love Seiko, most Seiko 5s actually have an applied Seiko logo and a Seiko 5 logo. Most of them do. So anyway, fantastic looking watch. So let's go ahead and try this thing on real quick. And then we'll also get a loom shot. Little watch check. I'm wearing my Range Man here today. Man, I love these Range Mans. And y'all know that there's a new Range Man coming out. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and put a picture of it up on the left-hand side of the screen. There is the new Range Man. It's GPS. I mean, this thing is going to be incredible. I cannot wait until this watch comes out. I think it comes out in May. Sometime uh, right before the middle of the year. March, April, May, something like that. 
Anyway, that thing looks to be an absolute monster. I <laughs> get it, monster. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, what was I doing? Let's go ahead and take this thing off. Let's try this watch on. Now, as usual, I know this is gonna fit right out of the box. Seikos always do for some reason for me. Probably because they have these big redwood sized wrists. <laughs> and I'm putting it on backwards. There we go, let's put it on the right way. All right, there we go. God, fantastic looking watch. Now, as with most watches, when you have other features like this map feature, or you have a chronograph or some of the other features, 99% of people don't use, like nobody's really ever gonna use this, this direction finder. Nobody's ever gonna use it. Nobody will really ever take this watch diving and um, you know use it for diving purposes. It's rated to 200 meters, which is 606 feet. Um, but if you're gonna have an extra function on the watch, Make it actually, you know, uh, usable. This actual, this this crown is so loose that just bumping this watch, just barely bumping it, and now I've moved the crown. So you can see that the north moved right there. I mean, I'll move it back. It'll go back the other way. There you go. And I just, I wish they would have, would I wish they would have addressed that. I don't know why they didn't. But anyway, now let's go ahead and uh, kill the studio light and the monitor. Let's get a loom shot with this thing. You can already see it shining a little bit right there. I mean, Seiko's Luma Bright, you know what's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and blast it on the wood for five or 10 seconds. We'll see what we got here. There you go. Good Lord, that is really bright. Nice job on the loom, Seiko. Wow, fantastic job on the loom. Look at that. Good great. it looks almost radioactive. <laughs> great, fantastic loom on this watch, wow. Anyway, so guys, so that's, that's really it for this one. And the only thing that's gonna keep me from, from keeping this particular watch, uh, and I keep most of the watches I buy, sometimes I sell them back, I mean send them back, I can't talk tonight. Sometimes I send them back, sometimes I sell them, sometimes I keep them, but I actually keep most of them. But I'm not gonna keep this one because of this crown, this inner chapter ring, and I'm also not gonna keep it because it's got the 7S36 movement instead of the 4R36 movement, which is windable and hackable. In today's day and age, I've got to have windability. I've got to have hackability. I can't just, you know, have to shake this thing uh, to constantly keep it wound. I want to wind it if I need to wind it. Uh, I want to, you know, be able to set the time precisely by having the hacking function where the second hand, um, if you notice, where the second hand pops out. And notice if I pull the, if I unscrew the crown, this crown has really good action. And I pull it all the way out, second hand still going. And there's no windability to it. So far as the crown, this thing's got a really nice crown. <laughs> really, really nice pull in and out action. Um, anyway, but that's what's gonna prevent me from keeping this one for those basically two major kind of flaws in my opinion. But this is a fantastic looking watch. If you if you don't mind those, those kind of flaws in my opinion, the uh, crown, the inner bezel, and the non-winding and non-hacking feature, or not feature, or non-feature, get this thing, man, because they're not gonna be out much longer. And uh, again, this is the made in Japan version. Some people like the made in Japan version is better. They think that they're of higher quality. I don't believe that at all. Um, there are other different versions that are made in Malaysia. This one happen happens to be made in Japan, but those Malaysian factories are staffed by Japanese managers and, and engineers and stuff. So the quality of the watches is gonna be the same, but some people are willing to pay a premium uh, for this one. This one's about a $50 premium. If you look at the black dial with the yellow, I think it's the yellow second hand, uh, that one's about $50 cheaper. In fact, let me go ahead and put it up on the uh, left-hand side of the screen for you. That's about $50 cheaper than this one. And it's made in Malaysia. It's not the Japanese-made version that this is. So anyway, um, guys, that's really about it. Anyway, if you like this video, please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I would really, really appreciate it. I really do appreciate all my subscribers. And again, make sure you check out my Amazon page for this and many of my other favorite watches. I'll also put that link in the description field for you. And uh, guys, I'm trying to think of anything else to tell you about this one. That's really about it. Uh, it's gonna be gone soon. If you want one, go out there and get it. Again, this has been the Seiko 5 Atlas 200 meter field watch, model number SKZ209J1. Fantastic looking watch, but it's got a couple flaws. But are those, are those flaws you know, big enough uh, to keep you from buying this watch? I would say probably not for a lot of people. Anyway, until the next review, I will see y'all later. Take care, bye-bye.